Okay, welcome to the One Life podcast by Betico. We have our four directors back again. Let's hit it hard. First topic is uh, work-life balance. We have some conflicting uh, thoughts, no doubt. Mm. Um, is it something that still should be called work-life balance? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for me, it always comes back to our purpose at Betico, and that's helping Kiwi build better businesses and better lives. You know, so the work-life balance is not only for our employees, but it's for our clients and our customers as well. What do you think? Yeah, it has always been a big key in, in New Zealand, right? Our Kiwi culture. You know, don't work too hard. Work just enough to have a good life, go to the beach after work. Whereas you compare to like big cities like Asia, it's always work, 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 work. That's the sort of culture they have. And you only finish work when the boss leaves. So, but it has changed over time. I mean, um, nowadays you, you're seeing big firms, even like the big four accounting firms, putting more pressure on work-life balance and making sure there's enough staff retention to keep profits going. What, what does it even mean, though? Like, I was just thinking the same thing. Mm. Like, it fucking rained the other day and everyone went home. Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, serious, you're laughing. Every like, excuse serious, not to work, like, they just don't work. And it's right. like, oh, should we send anyone home? Well, like, surely common sense is there to... Like, I think if it's your house the, is flooding, go home. But It's got murky yeah. because of COVID. Mm. Exactly. Everyone thought, okay, we're working from home has somehow become like work-life balance. Mm. But, yeah, but it's not. But it's not. It never was to yeah. start like that. Work-life balance actually meant, did your work-life take over your li your life? Yes. And Or did your life fuck your work-life? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, and it was. I think it was important back in the day because you'd have, like, you know, overseas, you work, 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 therefore you need to find some balance. But, like, employers are now just creating balance. So, yeah. actually, what is the point of the term? Balance. Yes. That is just, just your balance. Job. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Well, no, this is just your job. We'll give you the balance part of your package. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to label it, totally. in my opinion. Cause, totally. Yeah, you, know, you got people going four day weeks. And um oh, which is great. Like productivity obviously goes up if you do a four day week. Yes. So the statistics say. Um yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't understand work life balance anymore. It doesn't make sense to me. I think it's antiquated. Yes. Well it's I I think we're a little further down the track because we were the we call this podcast One Life mm. because we believe that there is no such thing as work life and uh, personal yeah. life or home life or whatever bloody life you have. It's that just one there's life. actually one life. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah. matter whether you're an employer, an employee, a mm. dog or a cat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've got one life and you better bloody make it count. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's the mindset of our teams then or the employees of our customers? What's their mindset? Where, where are they at? Well, apparently 54% of people would take a pay cut for more work-life balance. Mm. So we need to define that first and foremost, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd like to know what that means. Yeah, is it just stop time, working when you want to? Exactly, or, no, you more know? time off work? Yeah. Or just... Yeah. For me, it means that our people are becoming slack. Ouch. I reckon. Yeah. Oh, so you can't put a blanket approach, Oh, not I blanket, think. but in general, yeah. like for that 54% yeah, that say they want a work-life balance, I think they're just out for an easy road. I'm, I'm with you. Easy road. Yeah. I reckon. But they're the um, good bunch that still want to work hard, you know. They, they'll put down everything and just reply to Totally, that's the 46%. But, uh, yeah. but it's true. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's COVID. Like, everyone's like, just because yeah. you can work from home now, it's regard put in the same bucket. But it's like, yeah, you can work from home, but are you actually working? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people forget that, like, you're, it's, I, I don't believe that people don't work hard. Like, um, I believe everyone's trying to do their best, but it's like, can are you most effective at work or at home? And you'd be able to make a better decision for yourself. But you find that people that work from home, I see them out. Like you know, sometimes you go to the gym at 9.30. It's mm. fine. Like we've got one life. I've done three mm. hours of work before. Mm. You go there. Oh, it's my work from home day. I just sleep in and go to the gym and then I'll have lunch. And it's like, fuck, mm. when are you going to do some work, bro? Like, yeah. And it, it that's your employer. Yeah. It, it totally, and it varies across people. You yeah. know, I think during lockdown, we found out with our own team that some cope better mm. than others. Yeah, and I think true. that's across industry and across business, right? Mm. So I think some thrive in that environment of walking, working from home. I think it's a learning curve. Mm. So some people overwork when they work from home, mm. like you and some, some of us and some of our team, yeah. and they get burnt out because they don't know when to stop. Yeah. No one's going to stop and talk to them. You know, yeah. there's no social interaction. But, yeah. but I think some might just be catching up, right? Yeah, and they've got yeah. no distractions. So they just but get shit it's done. It's a, a, probably a journey for each individual. Like the whole lockdown thing was pretty new to everyone, right? Yeah. But over time, people know what actually is work-life balance. Yeah. How do you structure your day? How do you go to gym properly? And I reckon employers need to put way more structure around work from home now. 
yeah. and work-life balance, whatever yeah. that means. Well, um, I think we're discussing the exact same thing that makes the whole bloody thing muddy is that mm. we just have been talking for two minutes about working from home. Who gives a shit? <laughs> it's it's not, just, It's that's like one tenth of the thing. Yeah. Uh, it's like all the rest, like you say, go yeah. to the gym and whatever. Mm. So the only way to do that is to either structure, yeah. put KPIs have to. or um, mm. have metrics. Yeah. And one of the key things, which is problematic for low performers, is if you move towards a results only work environment where you're like, okay, mate, do your work whenever you want, have your balance, but here's your outcomes that you need to achieve this month, this quarter, this year. And everyone's going to be happy if that person achieves those things. But then the people that get unhappy are the people who can't perform in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm, totally. Is, so that, that, is, that, totally. is that unfair? Well, you have to have that flexibility because no one's the same, right? So you what, what, what kind of flexibility though? Like, what do you mean? Like well, having, having some high performance, some low performance. Yeah, yeah, correct. And some results driven, and some are driven by the time that they are at their computer or at their desk. Mm. Structure, maybe. Mm. I reckon definitely. No, maybe. Yeah. Have to. Yeah. But is, like, it one, yeah, like, is it one size fits all though? Well, it used to. Like that's why they work life balance. But it used mm. to. Everyone just used to go to work, start at eight, leave at five. Mm. Now it's do whatever whenever you want yeah. and if your employer's got enough to measure they'll measure otherwise they'll wear the cost of the additional wage costs mm. and the low productivity and not even worry about the extra margin or they'll just put their prices up and fucking send it to the customer mm. like, so yeah. the customer just ends up paying more yeah, totally. okay so we often talk about some of the learnings we've been doing is about how how two parties need to communicate and often the employees are waiting for employers to have the conversation with them, right? Like yep. we see it in, with our team, we see it with all sorts of customers. And one of the learnings is maybe it should be a message to everybody that go, okay, you go 50, you go 50 and let's, let's have a discussion in the middle, not meet in the middle and, and agree, mm -hmm. but let's, it's up to both of us to actually come and forcibly have the conversation yeah, yeah. to be like, what the fuck are we going to do about this thing called work-life balance that we may or may not believe in? Mm. And what does that mean for you? And do you want it? Mm. Because if 54% of people will take a pay cut to do it. Mm. And let's say we're going through crap time in the next 12 months or 24 months yeah. and people are looking for cost savings. What well, not that the solution? Mm. Yeah, but then there'll be, what is it? Let's say they work four days. It's 20% down. On their their wages. So if you're a six figure salary, you'd make eighty k. But what if what if we were in a results only work environment where it's like maybe it's work? We're not even using four days a week. Whatever mm. it is, you maybe just have this to achieve, and you get paid that much. Maybe that person works twenty percent faster yeah. than everyone else. Yeah, correct. does that matter? Yeah. Well, How productive or efficient are you? Yeah. Yeah. Does, and, does, that, does that boil down to the individual and how clever they are? Maybe. What clear. if they're using AI and then do it in half the amount of time? Finish that work. <laughs> it should be way faster Works. than half. If it's half, you're too slow. Work yeah. smarter, not harder, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, then. So if someone wants work-life balance, they... So I've talked to you guys about this. I reckon we should put in our job descriptions that you can't work at Betterco unless you know how to use AI in the future. Do you think that's too harsh? No, 100%. Mm. Yep. Someone asked me a question the other day, and my first question was, did you check the chat? I call him Gary. <laughs> now, I hate ChatGPT. It sounds funny, Gary. but it's true. Like, and so then, just they should check. Surely, like, mm. why are you bothering me to get the answer that you can teach yeah. yourself? Back then, is did you Google it, mate? Yeah, yeah. So now yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Gary. Yeah. So hold on. So an employee can have better work-life balance if they're using AI and chatbots. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to evolve because I think it's faster than half now, right? Like, you mm. can get an answer in three seconds. Yeah, so totally. yeah, that's not half like you can write a report pretty quick these days yeah. and it's pretty good like if you haven't used it then living under a rock it must be rascal well this um, is where i think people are going to get penalized if they're using it and we don't go down to a results only work environment because yeah, have to. they're yeah. gonna be putting out more output and then if they have done so much for mm. the week and they want to go take friday afternoon off to do whatever they like then sweet Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. I suppose we're, that's specific industries, right? Like these other industries that can't. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll challenge it. 
against myself. Well, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a <laughs> waiter, hospitality and retail, maybe. if you're a waiter, you can't just say, "Hey, I'm gonna serve two times faster for two hours. I'm gonna take the next." Have two you hours not been off. served by a robot yet at the restaurant? <laughs> no, I have tell you, you what, not? actually, oh, no, so, that's right. Yeah, yeah. they just drop an iPad off and you put mm. it in, and they take it away. The I worst is that. when you tell Absolutely me to use my that. own device to order my meal. That drives me fucking mad. Yeah. That's like I'm here, the four of us. Let's go eat somewhere, yeah. and hey, we all just pull out our phones, all of us, because then it just looks like all um, of the engagement goes. Oh, like, I hate it. So I much. hate it as well. That human contact yeah. is so important. Yeah. You, know? you remember last I time like we had a beer at Newmarket, mm. yeah. and the waitress walked past, oh, and yeah. oh, yeah. it's trying just not. He's, he said he wanted another beer, and said, "Hey, can you just grab me another beer?" She said, "No, you're no, gonna you have to go through scan the QR yeah. code." But I'm like, "You're gonna bring minutes. it anyway. Just yeah. go there. I'm gonna do it now." She, surely good. she should have some discretion to be like, "I'll just punch this one." And out. she's like, "No, no, the person said you gotta you gotta scan a QR yeah. code." Sorry, yeah. mate. I mean, it's getting pathetic because I drove out of three petrol stations the other day just because I was in one of those fucking moods, and I was like, "Open the pump for me. I want to fill my car up." Mm. Now nah, you have to pay inside, sir. I said, like, "Nah, just open the pump, like, yeah. or you can pay there." I'm like, "I don't actually want to." Like, something entitled, something. Princess. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Now nah, that pisses me off. Like, there's still an element of customer experience that well, needs to happen. Right? And so, yeah. you, T- totally. Like, I like human engagement. Like, one of my strengths is relator, right? If you go yeah. to strength finder mm-hmm. thing, and one of the things I learned is I need to talk to somebody mm. first. Mm. That's how I build trust. Mm. And like, I hate the screen mm. thing. Like, I can get used to the screen after a while, but I need to know you first. Um, and it's probably a different because I'm maybe not I'm not going to see this petrol guy again. Yeah. But mm. just open the pump, man. Like yeah. it's yeah, what they're focusing. What is, what pisses me off is they're focusing on the people that are about to steal petrol, and so they lock the pump because they think I'm going to steal the petrol. Oh, so I'm not. Petrol. I'm not worried so about not me. Too to fall so I'm not, I don't to care that you look at me like a thief. That's fine. Mm. Do that. But like, why are you focused on the one or two percent? Yeah. They're going to rob your gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're ruining the entire so, customer yeah. experience for the minority. Yeah. So I was like, ah, yeah. oh, fuck it. You, this is another hundred and eighty bucks gone. Like. Why would you, you know, that's three petrol stations, yeah. all of the same brand, actually. Um, and then I went, I took a photo, actually, and I'll post on my LinkedIn, but I went to Caltex and Blockhouse Bay, good on them. It said, support local. Oh, bang, I was in there. That's yeah, it. Yeah, Open the pump straight away, poured it in, 180 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Had a good conversation with the lady and I left. Yeah. Mm. Like, that's, surely that's, yeah. So we're we losing the, that in business well, and it's going to yeah, cost Elster people. Elster and I have got the woo strength, right? So we like to be in a social, you know, engagement yeah. we like to be out there like the the event on friday night that we had at for better Co. We're, we're in our element right you go around you talk to people if that is taken away from us i'm not going to be we'll happy. crumble yeah well i don't, I like I don't know whether we'll crumble mate but you know we we'll press well, what, yeah. what do you get up for like surely you want to talk to somebody yeah, yeah. And, and that's why in in a retail or a restaurant you need yeah. that interaction so you think ai is going to change all of this, all this human interactions could just go out the window. No, well, we, we could let it days. take over or we could control it or some well, like, there's boundaries. there's a difference right, between like, AI and technology. They're mm. two different things, mm. right? One's artificial intelligence. So it's like kind of replacing the human elements mm. or the human brain power. Technology is supposed to make us more efficient like, mm. and just make our lives better. Mm. Yep. There's a client of ours who's just been in Dubai and he's just come, come back. He's gone to a retail store in the mall so why do people go to the mall? To, they go to look at stuff and buy stuff. Mm. In the retail store in the mall in Dubai is 20 screens. So you go through the screen and you choose what you want. And then someone goes out the back and brings the shoe for Yeah, right. It's like, what was the point? Yeah. Just over-engineered the shit out of it. Do people like that experience though? I don't know. The shop was empty when he took a photo. So. Yeah. Yeah, we see. Mm. Yeah. Have you guys been to Uniqlo before? Yeah, oh, yeah so wow. Well, anyone Sydney that's Sydney been to Uniqlo it. outside yeah. of New Zealand, you go in there, you don't even have to talk to anyone, mm. pick up a t-shirt, pick up some blouses, literally drop it yeah, in I dropped little it bin in the thing. Box. The box is going to calculate all your pay within like two seconds. Yeah. You just swipe your card and, and say, that's gone. it. And it's yeah. You don't have to yeah, talk to gone. anyone at all. See, I don't yeah. mind that at a retail front. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe if it, the size wasn't there, you would need to find someone to find the stock. Yeah, you know? But true. I suppose they're overstocked anyway, so it's that's okay. I don't mind the technology piece. If I don't have to use my own device, if you give me an iPad and we order, then that's fine because we do it together. Like it feels like it's still like me not trolling my bloody phone. Yeah, and and then it's like yeah, I don't know. Just that engagement's still there at that particular shop. So well, technology I mean, is good if it keeps the human element. But what I'm worried about is the future generation, right? Like mm. I personally had a retail background before I became an accountant, so I learned a lot of how to talk to people mm. of different ages, different ranges through my retail job. So if Uniqlo is just saying, no, you don't have to talk to clients anymore, they just drop it in the bin. Yeah. All you do is fold clothes and look at a wall. 
what's that going to change the future generation? But I think that's where we were talking about like work-life balance earlier and we're talking about what what is actually going to be people's duties going forward. They're actually going to change. So for a retail mm -hmm. person, you might not be behind a, a machine anymore. Yep. Your job might be to do what's called like 10-10. If somebody's within your 10 meters, you got to hit them within 10 seconds. Mm. Like yes. go back to some of that mentality where it's like, provide a proper face-to-face -face yeah. customer experience. Be like, how can I help you? So you're removing a human element, but you're replacing it with something with, else. With proper yeah. um, skill set. Yeah. What if that person is a fabric expert or yeah. or whatever, right? Like, is this the evolution of the human race? Well, I think it should be. Sure. Like, shouldn't we be getting better and better every day? Totally, yeah. So yeah. like, if artificial well, intelligence can do yeah. the basic stuff yeah. and then we're required as humans to upskill ourselves and be better and but where does the line stop i feel like the world's just been moving way too quickly in the last 32 years of my life yeah. and now you just want to throw your phone against well where the where the fuck's my brick phone you know <laughs> yeah. so like How talking about ai I um there's i saw this times article um and there's a new job out there called ai prompt engineer guess how much they get paid Three hundred thousand plus what, us dollars what do they do so all they do is you don't need any computer engineering. You're not an IT guy. Mm. You just help a company to write AI prompts to make them more efficient. And you can get paid $300,000 a year. That won't so, last. I don't know. That is that a last. face? Is that a face? Well, he'll lose his, he'll lose his job. Well, yeah. <laughs> Say so he's, yeah. so he's a boomer. <laughs> That's a pretty good job. Why is it not going to last? I'm interested. Um, I don't know. I just think um, the evolution of AI, that his job will become redundant because it's moving so fast. But if, mm. if that $300,000 would generate $10 million of revenue mm. for that company yeah. by writing good prompts, mm. is that three hundred k worth it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Fuck yeah. 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 Totally. Well, I think that's probably why it's such a high paying role in the first place is he probably knows he's going to be redundant in 18 months. He's probably making it better to machine learn, right? So, mm. Yeah, correct. Um, yeah. yeah. But I think, like, back to your point on AI, right? Who uses it, who doesn't? Yeah. Do you discriminate people who don't use it? For me, AI, if I if I run an interview, AI shows me two different type of people, right? And if you use the teacher man how to fish analogy is, this one that goes out hunting for the fish, yeah. hungry, yeah. and the one that keeps screaming to say they're hungry, but even if you give them a fish, they'll still throw it away, right? <laughs> So which side are you? If I, if, if I pitch some AI to someone else, they'll say, oh, that's a pretty cool product. I can apply it to my business, my personal life. You give it to someone else, they'd be like, eh, waste of time. AI's, AI's not going to replace me. Mm. Don't look at it. I think people that's who naive, use computers though. day to day have an unfair advantage as well. Like I think we have an unfair advantage, which is why we're probably a little more bullish on it and we're like, use the bloody AI. Yeah. But if let's say you're a builder and you don't even use a computer as much, Maybe you're the type of person who needs to use AI more because when mm. you go to a computer, you need to be faster. Yeah. It should give you a little bit more in the short space of time that you are in front of a computer, yeah, right? I, I, yeah, maybe. I suppose um, you'd expect the advisors to be like, hey, have you used this piece of tech that improves your business? Mm. Like they're good builders, but who have they hired to help them grow their business? Yeah. I think you need to be curious. Yeah. You do. You I think that's a key do. word. Yeah. yeah. So with uh, chatbots and Gary, as you call them, I yeah. think you do need to be curious. And if you're not, you're going to be left behind. Yeah, left but I still think, as you know, salespeople or business development people, you still need that human touch, 100%. Yeah. You yeah. just use the tech behind that to make your job more efficient. That's right. At least in New Zealand, right? Like in New Zealand, we're like, so we we love that interaction, the connection. Oh, so that's what makes us. You might go to right? America, yeah. and it might be different. I don't know. I've never been to America, so but I'm just, yeah. Like I feel like as Kiwis. We're a like, social we're, beast. Yeah, hundred yeah. like, so percent. Oh, but I think every to, every human deep down inside crave human interaction, whether to say yes or no. Yeah, yeah, just in different ways. I think. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Because otherwise, yeah. you you just in your head. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, so the introverts of this world, you know, they don't want to have any human contact, do they? Yeah, that's when they spiral out of control. But in different forms, they will still watch a YouTube video that has a human talking. Yeah. Right, but surely yeah. your mouth and, needs and, to move, and then they'll, and then they'll <laughs> game, and then they'll. <laughs> yeah, I suppose like it's the only reason. why well, I think the only benefit of school now is for social interaction. You mm. didn't go there to learn anything. What's the fucking point? Does like, kids still go to school? What are they going to actually yeah. learn? Uh, like yeah. I, I'm quite worried. worried about I totally agree with you there. I drop shit yeah. off, and I'm like, hey, man, have a good day. Say so, so, honey, everyone, <laughs> fuck knows what you're going to learn, but yeah. Yeah. have a good oh, day. So, you know, like yeah, but it's the social aspect, of course. Yeah, yeah. and they yeah. they learning those skills from a really ah. young age. They're in daycare and all of that yeah. sort of stuff. So and that's I the only reason. That's, that's human. Right? You'd almost rather they spend one day a week on art, one day a week on sport, yeah, and one day a week only one. 
Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he goes to school to play soccer every day at London. <laughs> he didn't go to school to do anything else. Well, were we any different though? I used to go to school to. Well, I, wanted, I, li- I liked it. Then. <laughs> like I, yeah, yeah I, did, I suppose. But school was easy back then. But nothing's changed. Exactly. Like absolutely nothing. Surely changed. it's easier now with technology. So you're telling me 32 years pass in your life, yep. and we're moving so fast. School has not changed one bit. No, like he's still reading him the same fucking book I read when I was at 10. He's reading at five. I was well, not a smart, but well, um, <laughs> yeah. But like you know, like why are they still the same fucking? Well, I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. Yeah. And that's where I have this whole financial literacy problem. With like now we have business owners coming to us and they don't know the fundamentals of like or the, the basics of money. Or, yeah. Okay, or one like, extra day for financial literacy. Yeah, uh, from from a, from a young age yeah. as well. Yeah. you know our kids need to be learning about money uh, and investments from a young. But age. then you need a whole new teacher. Because no, oh, you've got Gary. It, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we teach it. Out, we can teach it, right? Like, but it's not just about making money. You have got to be able to spend it, save it, and give it away. Like, yeah. and otherwise, you're just going to be the oh, guy yeah. that never pulls out his wallet. Yeah, but it's awareness, right? Yeah, yeah. Across yeah. the board, so not specifically on any one thing for a, a four, five, or six year old, right? Yeah. I mean, I have this absolute passion for financial literacy and wanting to teach children, but like, just give up. Like, how are you going to do it? It's not like we're going to go see the government and be like, hey, um. Mm. Here's a great idea. There what are organisations out there that do offer it to schools. Yeah, but they're not doing enough. No, like, they're not. Yeah, they're not no one gets to get like, it right. Yeah, come yeah. on, like. But whose responsibility is it really? It's not that person's responsibility. It's the, the parents or yours. Yeah, okay, but you got to break the cycle because the parents probably don't know either. They yeah. don't have the skills. So yeah. So, but then it should be their responsibility majority. to send the kid to that organization yeah but the government want to be responsible for everything else in our life so why not do well, the financial literacy piece? that's true like, fuck. here we go <laughs> <laughs> it's true. we don't talk about politics you know <laughs> you live in, no in, in, in politics you live in New Zealand for a reason like uh, you, you know. it's another podcast yeah <laughs> well, I think we should so what do we now. need to do to get financial literacy into schools oh, I wish I knew otherwise I'd do it but I don't think they're prepared to listen is my problem like government organizations and any other business won't have enough impact to get it flowing through nationally some schools are doing okay in it but i don't think schools would be pushing work-life balance as a as a thing from a young age they they push academia like be smart be yeah. book smart right yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do. yeah i mean then you put them under a fluorescent light and the poor kid can't learn like he might be a creative but you're fucking sitting in yeah. a box yeah. like you know like this needs to change what, what about um what about our customers and the businesses that we act for and the businesses mm. that are out there in general What's their financial literacy like, do you think, on the whole? I think low. Like, um, if you, like, if you, if, if they had been taught simple things 10 years ago and they had done those things for the last 10 years, like, like you ask any of your customers, do you understand compound interest? They would, maybe they'll say yes, but did they do anything about it? Absolutely not. Mm. So, even five grand 10 years ago would be worth a shit ton of money today. And it would take that yeah. much more pressure off their business and their personal life now. None of them did it. Um, what is our role in, in educating or teaching our customers, do you think? Well, I think uh, to answer your first question was like, what? It, I think they know. I think most of, most people know when they're a business owner how to be financially, financially literate, right? Oh, the problem no. they have is no. doing anything about it. Like if they understand, let's say they know compounding interest. Mm. Are they actually, they've, obviously they actually, they've heard the term. Mm because they got there somehow mm. but then do they actually go and read what the actual definition is mm. do they actually go and put into practice okay three percent over 10 years and oh oh my god over seven seven percent a piddly little seven percent is going to double my money over 10 years mm. do they actually know that mm. then i'd say no because they know I, what it is yeah i get that but there's absolutely no excuse anymore like even if you you like your curiosity comes in and you go oh shit what is compound interest guess where you go GPT, Gary, <laughs> and Gary. Hey, what is compound interest? Cool. What should I do about it? Fuck it. We'll tell you what to do. Yes, but, but I'm thinking like tradesmen, tradespeople in the market, right? They need to have a base level of financial literacy, right? Mm. But they probably don't want to know any more than that. So, Some people so we, just block it out. Yeah, so yeah. we can educate and we can teach them over and mm. above that. But I think there needs to be a minimum standard if you're in business. Mm-hmm. But they're, they're, equally, those guys are the ones that will come to you and give you the most problems. Well, like, yeah, oh, true. life sucks and yeah. you can, you can this solve and them for them that's, that's oh, yeah, no. like we try our best at our meetings when we meet yeah. them but like if they don't want to pay for it we might just meet them once or twice a year which is not enough right mm. but this, this is not because it's probably not a better issue it's probably the other accountant's Correct. issue where 
and I've said this for a long time, is if you just lift, like you ask any accountant, if you can lift every single one of your clients by 5% every year, what do you think it will do to the New Zealand economy? Mm. Would, mm. Like the taxes would go out of the roof. Yep. People would have more money. Yeah. The economy would just grow. Like it's not that hard a metric. Like I, you could growth, do that. Right? Yeah. You could do, yeah, compounding growth. Mm. To forget about the 5%, mm. just, but like, you know, like why, I would, so the, what they do actually, what other, what I see in the problem I have in the industry is that let's file your tax return and do your set of accounts. Mm. Right, the sooner IOD get rid of that, the better. Mm. Well, the first problem we have in this country is it's too easy to open a company. You can just go into the company's office and open one. It's mm. like getting a driver's license and opening it out of a Weetbix box. <laughs> but, you know, mm. oh, company, limited liability. Well, yeah, hey, I'm out. It's like, and these no, people I'm say, like, Yeah, I'm a director now. Yeah. 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 So, what are you saying? It should be like a test. It should be a test. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. It should That's be like, Did you point. read some of the five fundamentals of the companies? So maybe yes. we, should, should we should test our customers. Maybe. Good luck with that. Yeah. I got oh, enough look, to do. look, I think some, <laughs> of, some, of our, some of the businesses out there and some of our customers, right? They probably are best just to stay in their lane at what they do. Yeah. You know, but mm. having that minimum standard of financial literacy is important. Yep. But for people that, I don't know, builder, electrician, what, whoever they are, that they don't have an interest in this, otherwise they'd be accountants. Yeah, but financial literacy is not about being an accountant. No, of course no. not. It's that minimum standard, but let them do what they're good at doing and, and how they operate yeah. their businesses. And there's so some I, good operators out there, yeah. right? Stay in your lane. Yeah, and, and they just let us control some of the rest of it. You know? I would argue that most mm. of those people are probably good at numbers. Right? Like a lot of builders and people in trades are actually really good at numbers. One of the reasons I'm in accounting is because I'm good at numbers. Mm. I don't love accounting. Do you love tax? No. Like, no. no like but, but we're just I, naturately but, curious and we like numbers. I, like I got into accounting because I, like, <laughs> I got into accounting because I like to be around people. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's weird. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's weird. Hey, who told you twenty no, years ago? No, because you're going to be interacting with a lot of people, and that's why you run your. But own you can interact. You could have interacted in any industry, and you picked yeah. accounting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, there's like, a business slant to it, of course. Yeah, yeah I think right? the business there's side business makes it slant. interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think curiosity was the number one thing. There is, mm. you have to be curious about the numbers. Mm. Otherwise, how do you? How do you get curious about compounding interest? How do you get curious about? Oh my God, like. Productivity, efficiency, mm. like mm. actually all mm. of that is just numbers, just mm. words mm. to describe mm. numbers. I, I think business owners are good. I probably, when I was, yeah, my, I don't know if it was a rant, but when I like get frustrated about the matter, I'm probably thinking about, oh man, my dad, for example, it's like, and I'm telling him now, it's like, you can't live, like, you can't pretend that you never got taught anymore. Like, you're on your phone, most of them are, on their phone, on Facebook, go like this all fucking day. Yeah. Like, why don't you turn that thing off and actually ask something? of the phone and it'll give you the answer and you could learn and actually you can better yourself mm. rather than like finger pointing, right? And that's probably, maybe it's a generational thing, but yep. you know. I'll tell you what's never changed through generations. Get rich quick. Everyone wants to get rich quick. There's no such thing. No, and there's no such not. thing, right? It's, it's called lotto. Thing. Yeah, you need to work hard. What we know across our clients or even seeing successful businesses is always the boring businesses that make heaps of money, right? Hundred the cash flow. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, but why? Why? Because they're good at numbers. Give me some. No, oh, yeah, making who sells tires? Manufacturing. Right? Yeah. Making glass. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but why is that boring? That might not be boring. Oh well, not sixty, I would say. Well, okay, what's well, sixty? Like, I guess what's it's, 60? A, it's a factory. Oh, starting an AI Accounting? company or <laughs> tech startups, you know. <laughs> okay, that was sexy. Yeah, <laughs> selling sex <laughs> toys online. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the glass is not sexy. No, but if you there if your better. sole job was to like stand at a machine and make sure it doesn't get jammed because there's cardboard going through and it like makes some boxes, mm. like that's what you're saying. It's, yeah. it's boring. Traffic cones, you know, mm. sort of boring business that some people, some people like that. They just stand there and just saying. Well, no, these days yeah, they it. don't. They're staring at a screen on the machine because yeah. of the technology is giving them the figures, so they have to have the skills to be like, what happens when that goes red? Yeah. Okay, but back to your question. So, oh, back to your comment. You're saying. The businesses that make the most amount of money are the boring ones. So, yeah. should we turn our business boring? Oh no, no. There's some boring <laughs> companies that make more money than we do. <laughs> yeah, well, 100%. accounting oh, for course. some people is boring, yeah. right? It's oh, okay. not the okay. tech so startup, just, the we, sexy we get, stuff, you know. No. But we made it sexy. Yeah, <laughs> I want to know what. Uh, like, I probably want to dig deeper about what's boring. Like this, and you've seen some businesses that are making money and you so refer to it as boring. It, it's like the stuff, when you ask a kid, what do you want to do when you grow up, right? Yeah. So I want to own an ice cream shop. Yeah. That's cool. That's sexy. That's yeah. fun. Mm. No one says, hey, I want to grow up selling tires. 
you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the yeah. difference. If you ask a kid what the answer is, that is it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Man, so, smart, hey. How's their work-life balance, <laughs> those people that are making tires? They're selling, selling oh, tires. Oh, they're chilling, right? Like you don't need to be there, mm. right? They just run the company. They have a good process and system in place. Yeah. Um, it makes good bottom line. It makes good margins. Everyone needs it. Mm. It's recession proof. It sounds like they are, okay, so they're, they're, the type, they're business owners, right? They have multiple businesses. They don't care if it's a boring one or not, as long as it's spinning out some money, it's a yeah. profit. So the ones that are, not making as much money as the ones that are so passionate about what they do and they just do that and they don't buy other businesses or have mm. other assets and oh, i feel depends, like it depends yeah well that's what you said that's what i heard yeah. and so i'm saying the one that make heaps of money you know okay. right? you can what still make heaps? how much is heaps <laughs> a million plus <laughs> plus yeah, million heaps, heaps. yeah, oh, yeah. that's heaps for Turnover, a lot of people. bottom line right. yeah i suppose go, line, and then going back to that is yeah. Yeah, so it might be boring, but there's other people. So then you've got two people. You've got mm. the boring lot that make heaps of money, and then you've got the passionate lot that make enough money to be happy. Yeah. Fuck, I hate passion. Everyone's <laughs> like, do your passion. Go but that, and find what, your passion. Yeah, but it means oh, so people need a passion. People need, well, no, they need like, a bring why. Bring passion. Need a yeah, need okay, purpose. bring the, yeah. Okay. Bring your passion to whatever job. Fuck if it's tires, like. Okay, so passion. Bring your best, passion to tires. tires. I'm feeling right? passionate right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go make some tires. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what did you say? You hate passion. Okay, so forget about passion. Find out what your why is. The people that do the things that they love to do to make money, they're happy doing that and they still make enough money. Hmm. Are they wrong or right to do that or should they buy other assets that are boring to make more money? Look, if it fulfills their life, there's nothing wrong with it. Yes. Yeah. There's no one way to live life. No. Yeah. Right? Right. Some people are making $30,000 a year, living on a beach. Is that wrong? No, it's not. Yeah. No. Because that's their call. Yeah. That's their choice. And that's, you know, so that, that's what we do at Bitcoin. Right? We find out okay, what so each yeah. one's purpose. And then following on that, yeah. I've got the other thing that drives me mad is, well, it doesn't drive me mad. It's not my problem. It's you this. are mad. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so then you got your, <laughs> you, you, got your <laughs> you got your passionate people, you got the boring people. So they make money. And then you got the people that have just created, I keep looking at you, I don't know why. <laughs> um, they it's have found, found their hobby. And they make no money. They're better off quitting their business, getting a job, and still be able to fill their passion. Why are they so stuck in their business and still like doing it year on year for six or seven years? Yeah. After I'm, you tell them all they've done, don't get out of this. Go get a job. Do the same thing. Yeah. I don't. I oh know you got. I, I tell you yeah. again. What? They don't understand the numbers. Mm. But they're, they're no, they've been told. But they don't understand the numbers. I'm saying. You can tell me what 10,000 means, but what if I don't understand yeah. what 10,000 and 100,000 means? Okay, what do you think? Sometimes it's psychology. You know, yeah. people have invested so much time and it's like their baby, right? And yeah. it's just so hard to just tell your baby go. to let it go. Yeah. Mm. So a lot of people, sometimes it's ego as well. You know, there's so yeah. much ego online. I'm a director for six years mm. running this surfboard mm. company. I can't let it go to die, you mm. know? So there's many things in play and the more you talk to a customer, the more you deepen down their personal level you understand what that purpose is yeah if you could find them and maybe show them some numbers and how to be financial literate you might be able to save the business yeah right the or, business or create a business yeah yeah That's or create a business with numbers the business yeah. is there to serve you and not the other way around That's right, right. we yeah. talk to that all of the time yeah. every single day yeah right so if that is totally true and you're saying these people are running a, say running a i don't know that's, that's the end goal, though, right? Yeah, that's, that's the holy grail. If that's like. the holy grail. Yeah, but it can't take six years to get to the holy grail. Like, you're lucky to keep your relationship and all the other well, things. Food on the, the problem, table. Right? As yeah. if, if yeah, something will give. That's where it's like, if having, I measure my life plan. in four areas health, wealth, love, and happiness. Mm. If, if they're really happy, but their marriage is breaking up because mm. they're nine to five or Monday to Friday, they're mm. like really stoked with it, what they're doing, mm. I don't know, tinkering mm. with cars, mm. growing flowers, and mm. making cupcakes, whatever it is, being an accountant, all good. Mm. But then your marriage falls over, what's the bloody point? Mm. You scored a 10 out of in one category. Maybe, maybe there was a way out of the marriage. There's <laughs> 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 easier ways than that. Seven years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. So... 
I, I think more and more of our customers, are, because they see it on our boardroom wall every time they mm. come in, it's, a, it's our thought of the day, but it's a thought of your life is the way that I put it. It's not a thought of the day. And so yeah. I think when our customers come in and they see that on the wall, they go, shoot, how can I get to that position? Yeah. Like we're acting for, and I'm just thinking of one business in particular, we're both directors are working 70 or 80 hours a week, you know, and they've got a pretty profitable and pretty successful business, but they can't continue like this forever, right? Mm. So they see that and they go, how can you help me at Betaco to actually achieve that. Yeah. And that's what we're doing now, which is great. Mm. Mm. So what is the thing that people who have boring businesses are doing right that other business owners are not doing? Because it's not it's not the fact that it's boring. They're probably not working in the business. Well, there's exactly two things, right? One, they're curious, right? They want to learn new things all the time. What's AI? What's the next new shiny object to help the business? Mm. And the second one's 1% 1 better every day. Yeah. They don't conform, you know, it's continuous improvement. That's one of our values at Bitico. You don't just look at a business, cool, I'm there, it's done. Imagine if Steve Jobs released the first iPhone and be like, that's it, that's the best one, done. Mm. Mm. What will be, will be now, you know? Mm. So iPhone 14 or 15 coming out? 14, bro. Yeah, every Whoa. year. That's fancy. So it's what, been 14 years, 15 years. So imagine if it stops there and every business just stops and be like, that's the best car Henry Ford has made, that's it, that's all you yeah. can drive. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. curi so curiosity. So no, someone I'm, to be successful in business has to be curious. Yeah, okay. and one percent better. One percent better. I, I think you need to get out of your business. Like I'm with Justin. Like if you are in your business, you're not. You're too busy fixing everything and just doing everything, and so then you're not letting it break. So if you get out of the business, yeah, like obviously you control it, but you got to do it from afar, and go. Yeah, so that's when you put in your systems, you hire your advisor, you get all that, get all that exactly, and then it's like. Yeah, go have lunch with somebody that's going to actually add some value to you and your mm. business mm. and you should be spending your time that way because you if you're let's if you're stuck in the business you're too close to it you can't solve the problems you can't fix the processes and, and imagine their work-life balance once they've got all of that sorted yeah oh and then the opportunity will be the next one and then the next one yeah, and you exactly. also yeah. then you don't have work-life balance for your employees you're giving them what they want which is probably some Hey, let me just do my job that you hired me to do, but you keep fucking talking to me about doing this thing and that thing and this thing. Like, just trust me. But not only that, the business will be more valuable. Yeah. Because they're not in it. That's right. Someone True. can pick it up and run it. So, I, I, yeah, I'm 100% like, and that's what I push my customers to do is get out of the business. And, you know, like you have to take a number of steps to get there. It's not going to happen overnight. No. But you also have to then invest some money back in the business and hire the right people to put in the right things. Business systems are one. Isn't it exciting when you talk to a business owner and you explain to them that getting them out of the business will make them richer for a start? Yeah. But their, their mind freedom and their work life. Mm -hmm. If you time, talk to any you know? business broker that sells, yeah. buys and sells business, the best businesses are those types of business, right? The one where you can step out. Yeah. They're not reliant on any one Correct. or two people. If yeah. you get hit by a bus, it'll still keep printing money. Mm. That's mm. perfect. It might yeah. not be 1% better every day, but it's still profitable. Yeah. Correct. So that's you know the, who's that's good that's at the business? Immigrants. Why? I think they have nothing to lose when they're coming from another country to, to a country. Like our family were immigrants. They're mm. not necessarily business owners, but like if you look at like Australia, for example, mm. they are incredibly resilient. They've mm. been through some sort of pain to get to where they are. Yeah. And so they they have nothing to lose. They've been through some pain. They're going to go through some more pain. Mm. They generally run boring businesses to start with. Mm -hmm because they're successful and they give the people what they want. Takeaways, theories, yeah. taxi mm. driving. Yeah, well, or they're very good employees as well. And then that was, mm. you mean, ver they're, uh, sorry, they're good rather, employees or employers? No, employees as well. Because yes, you know, yes, some, people, some people don't just come here and create a business, right? So some yeah. people yeah, come right. in here and they've got nothing to lose, as you say, and then they'll just go in there and they'll work fucking hard, you know, to achieve what they need to because they're in a new country. You know, they don't know where And where I think immigrants have a huge abundance mentality. Like they they literally risk their lives, whether it was by boat, by plane or whatever, risk their lives to go somewhere where they probably haven't been before, mm. most of them. Mm. And they're like, it's gonna be better over there. I'm gonna give it a crack. Mm. There's probably more over there than there is over here. Yeah. And let me just do some boring shit for a while. You know what's crazy? There's no YouTube or TikTok to do a review of what the country's like back in the days. You mm. just pack up your suitcase and go. 
Yeah. yeah. You, you get your mate to write a letter from over there, say, oh, it's not bad, bro. Come to Otara. <laughs> 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 and you just, oh, sweet. I'll just go on. Yeah. Check it out. You talk about taking a risk, eh? Yeah. You had no fucking idea when you were getting on that yeah. boat. So, like, if people. But, but, can then when, uh, but then, as a government, they shut the door. Well, they yeah. shut the door on immigrants. So, where are they? Well, this is the. Uh, the, the fucking, this is half making. the problem of businesses at the moment, right? Because we have no mm. hard workers. Kiwis are hard workers too, some of them. But the immigrants, we're saying, are harder workers. But we don't have them in this country at the moment. Yeah. Well, they, they need to open that up shut the as door. soon as possible. It's, it's really There's a hospitality retail oh, suffering. Like, like so those two are just getting yeah. hammered. Hammered? R- restaurants yeah. can't even find chefs, so. Nope. Yeah. No, well, like we went They're to Queenstown. The same shifts. Then we go yeah. to Queenstown, we couldn't even book a table for dinner because yeah. we hadn't like, organized ourselves. And so we're here. Like we can't even. There's just not enough people, and there's no chefs. Oh, that's when we went to that conference. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a shock. Oh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. So it could be a sexy business, and then you can't find staff, and then you have to be the person in the business, and then what? The end result is that you lose the passion, and then you can't bring any passion, and then you got to wind it up. Just so. get a job. I'll just get a job. Come back later. So to be successful in business, you got work-life today, balance anyway. We have said you have to get the fuck out of the way and let your people do the work. You have to have that human element, human touch. You must be curious and you must be 1% better every day. Yep. Mm. Anything else to add to that? Yeah, I've got plenty. For another podcast. Yeah. <laughs> For another day. Come <laughs> see me. All right. Thanks, guys. That's a wrap. Awesome.